Next, I read The Time Is Now by Joan Ch... What is her name? <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm back with another video. Today I'll be talking about all the books that I read in March and I read 11 books this month so I have a lot to talk about so let's get into it. The first book I read this month was Life Isn't Binary on Being Both Beyond and In Between by Meg John Barker and Alex Ian Taffy. This is actually a nonfiction book and it talks about the gender spectrum and non-binary genders, but also talking about non-binary thinking and how to implement that in the rest of society. So this book combats a lot of either or thinking and us versus them and talks about the ways in which that influences society and how harmful that kind of thinking is. I thought this was really interesting and had a lot to say and it really goes into the ways in which either or thinking and us versus them mentalities are really harmful. One of the things that I really liked about this book is the chapter that was on bodies and how society places some bodies above others. And there was a lot of discussion in that chapter, especially on like race and disability and beauty standards. And it was just really interesting all around. I will say there is a lot of academic talk in this and it might go over some people's heads. And some of it even went over my head, but I still think it's worth checking out. That being said, I've talked about this before, I feel weird rating nonfiction, so I left this without a rating. The next book I read was This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal L. Motar and Max Gladstone. This is a really popular sci-fi novella about two ladies who are on opposite sides of a time war and they work for two warring agencies and they start writing letters to each other and eventually they fall in love. I actually read this on audiobook, which I would actually recommend because the audiobook has two different narrators for both of the women in this. And I also have actually read this before a couple years ago when it first came out. And at the time it really went over my head and I couldn't get into it. So I didn't really like it that much, but I was hoping to like it more the second time around. And I'm not a total fan of it. This book has some of the most beautiful writing that I have ever read. So just shout out to the authors for being able to do that and also being able to work together to accomplish that because that must have been a feat, let me tell you. But because the writing is so beautiful and so flowery and so descriptive, sometimes I kind of got lost in what was going on. There's also not much plot to this book. It really is just these ladies moving through time, but nothing's also really explained. There's not a whole ton of world building and not a whole ton of explaining what's really going on. And I can get behind a book like that. There are a lot of books that I've liked where the magic isn't necessarily explained or that have beautiful writing or that don't have much of a plot. Those are typically things that in books I really enjoy, but for some reason when all of them were combined, especially with this really frilly descriptive writing, a lot of it really went over my head. The one thing that I will say that I really did love about this book is just the sense of yearning between these two women. This is one of the most like evocative, like powerful books that I've read that have just this sense of these two women yearning for each other. And that is really carried on through the entire book. I can appreciate this for what it is a lot more than the first time that I read this book, but I really don't think this book is for me, so I did end up rating it three stars. Next up, I read Hungry Hearts, 13 Tales of Food and Love, edited by Elsie Chapman and Caroline Tung Richmond. This is actually a short story collection and all of the stories have to do with food. I actually really enjoyed this. This is one of my first attempts at reading a short story collection and it did not disappoint. One of the interesting things about this that I wasn't expecting is that all of these short stories are interconnected. They all take place in this city where there's a lot of restaurants and everyone kind of knows each other and all of the businesses kind of know each other so 
some characters show up in other short stories. And I thought that was really interesting. I liked the way that a lot of these stories talked about love, whether it be romantic love or friendship or family love or love of your culture. I thought it was all really interesting and I really liked it. There's also a wide range of stories in here. I thought that a lot of these would be like light and fluffy and happy because they're all about food and love but there's some pretty heavy ones. Like there's some about grief, which I really enjoyed. And there's even a couple that are more fantastical, which was really interesting. And yeah, I really liked this overall, but there were some stories that I liked more than others, which is natural in a short story collection. And there were some that I couldn't get into. So overall, I'm also rating this three stars. Next up, I read The Miseducation of Cameron Post by Emily M. Danforth. I freaking loved this book. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> I actually have an individual review on my channel of this, so I will link that on the screen. This is about a girl named Cameron Post, and when she was young, her parents died, and she lives in a really small conservative Christian town, and she also thinks that she might be a lesbian. And this book is just her exploring her sexuality and exploring her grief and basically it's just a slice of life book and there is also a conversion therapy element so there is a trigger warning for that because she does also eventually end up getting sent to conversion therapy i said this in my review but i absolutely love this book it had very beautiful writing and a very distinct setting and I loved Cameron Post as our protagonist. I thought that she was very complex and lovable and driven and just interesting to read from. And this was a very emotional read and just very slow and character driven and I couldn't get enough of it. And I rated it five stars. Next up, I read Saga Volumes 7, 8, and 9 by Brian K. Vaughn. This completes my saga reread. This is, I think, my favorite graphic novel series right now. I've talked about it several times before. It's a adult science fiction graphic novel series, and I absolutely love it. I'm not going to go too deep into spoilers right now just because this is the final chunk of the series or at least for what's out right now so i don't want to like spoil anything but just know that these last three volumes are so intense and this is when the series really gets dark there's some really dark stuff and especially in this chunk i will say some of the plot twists or some of the more like shock value aspects of this story didn't hit as hard as it did the first time just because this is a reread so I knew what was going to happen but that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy it any less. The three of these together were an absolute gut punch and I couldn't get enough of them and I still love them and I rated them each five stars. Next to heal from Saga I read Heartstopper Volume 2 by Alice Oseman. This is my other favorite graphic novel series it's a YA contemporary and the first book follows two boys that meet in school and they fall in love. This book follows more of their relationship as it develops and we see a lot more of each of their families. We get one of the boys coming out journey as he kind of finds a label for himself and kind of figures out how he wants to navigate that in his life. We see their friend groups for the first time, really, and we just get a lot more of them being cute together. It's a cute story, it's fun, it's happy, it's light, it's good vibes, it's an all-time favorite of mine, and I rated this five stars. Next, I read Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo. This is the final book in the Grisha trilogy, and I actually have an individual discussion of this video on my channel, so I will link that on the screen. And I talked about this in my video, but I have a complicated relationship with this book because even though I actually really enjoyed the experience of reading this book a lot more than I enjoyed reading the other two books, I felt that the pacing was a lot better in this one, I felt that the way it was constructed was a lot better, and I felt like it was more engaging. I didn't necessarily like how a lot of things wrapped up in this book. I liked a lot of the buildup and a lot of the more dramatic scenes, but in the end I kind of felt that things wrapped up really easily and there wasn't a lot of loss or a lot of stakes and I kind of felt like 
you know, what was the whole point of it, you know? But that being said, I still did enjoy reading this, but I ended up rating it 3.5 stars. Next, I read The Time Is Now by Joan Chittister. This was my mom's pick for us to read this month, and we read it on audiobook. And essentially, this is a manifesto about activism and spirituality and how important it is for people to stick up for the marginalized and essentially giving biblical evidence for why we should be fighting against things like racism, sexism, homophobia, etc. This book is really interesting. I like a lot of the things that she had to say and I liked seeing a lot of the biblical evidence. My issue with this is that I just feel like it was too long. This is just one of those books where I feel like it's just very basic and it doesn't go very in depth and it's definitely more persuasive versus informative and I feel like if you're someone like me where you're already agreeing with what she has to say, a lot of what she has to say starts becoming a little bit repetitive. And not only that, even just in the examples that she gives, she gives the same ones a lot. And I kind of feel like it's one of those books where it's like, once you've read the first couple of chapters, you kind of get the gist of the entire book. I still think it's worth the read and I think it's interesting. And if you're interested, I think you should check it out, but I'm leaving it without a rating. And as always, there's always a book that I tack onto the end of here that I'm still in the middle of, and this month that is Lore by Alexandra Bracken. As you can see, I'm still in like the first half of this book, but by the time this comes out and by the time the end of the month comes, I will have finished this. This is one of my most anticipated books of the year, and it essentially takes place in a world where the Greek gods come down to Earth, and they are being hunted by this hunter society, and if they are killed, the person that kills them gets to take their power and become like the new god. And we follow a girl named Lore, and her entire family has been killed off, so she has excommunicated herself from the hunter society, but once something happens, she ends up having to go back to the Hunter Society and everything kind of takes off from there. I started this off by saying that this is one of my most anticipated books of the year. So naturally, I had really high hopes for this. But honestly, so far, it's really falling flat and I'm really disappointed in it. But overall, just the characters are really flat and I feel like the characters' motivations are changing, like, like this, with no evidence, just left and right all the freaking time. And overall, it's just very basic, and it's giving me issues. <laughs> so when I'm editing this, by the time I finish, I'll put like a rating down here so you guys can see when I ended up rating it, but just know that it's not my thing, it's not what I wanted it to be, and it's letting me down a little bit. So yeah, that's it. That's all the books that I read in March. If you've read any of these, let me know what you think down in the comments and let me know what you read in March as well. I'd love to hear about those. But that is all that I have for you today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and don't forget to smile. Bye!